Yes. All the way down, almost from Brazil. Almost from Brazil. Yes, and uh, I'm, really, I'm really happy. He's my friend, and I'm really happy he's finally here in, in Bulgaria. And uh, after this talk, you will become Jedis of persistence. Now, please make those people Jedis. Ottavio, enjoy. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, super happy to talk about data. And yes, I have three hours of conversation, but I forget to do the backup, so I just have 50 minutes what data left. But anyway, let's do a little bit of uh, explanation about G Java architecture, how we handle with that, and of course, talk about Jakarta, right? Uh, the specification around Java and enterprise architecture. The first questions that we usually do when we talk about data is why? Why data is such much important thing that we need to handle that? And yes, because data right now is our business goal, is our target, right? Is where the information is there, is how we get the soul of the application. It's impossible to imagine application if without data right now. And of course, Right now, we are using and exploring several buzzwords like microservice, uh, Kubernetes, and so on. And most of the time, when we talk about scalability, we mention the idea of being stateless. But of course, this state needs to go to somewhere. And probably is around data. And when we talk about data, we also apply the idea from new opportunities like uh, data cloud or machine learning operations and even new products from data. For example, in Brazil, we have the biggest Latin America bank, that is Itaú, who decided to start to sell wines because they checked the credit card. They could see that, okay, right now we have several uh, wine lovers in Brazil, and they decided to sell wines, and it becomes the biggest winery in the whole country, because they could see the data through this information from users, right? Uh, to explain more about data, let's achieve our goal using three steps. Uh, the first one is business. Basically, when we talk about data, it's about the reason that we're doing that, the goal, right? And, and every time that I talk about the business, the goal to achieve with data, I remember the quote from this amazing book, The Modern Software Engineering by Dave Folland, that explained for me, so far, the best definition of software engineering. That is, an application of empirical scientific approach to find efficient economic solutions to find issues in software. And every time they talk about domains, they will talk about design, it's impossible to don't mention DDD, right? It is, it is still a buzzword that we love to do. Indeed, when we talk about microservice, we can see several books, several definitions that say, okay, with DDD, we're able to do microservice, especially because we're able to break down our domains and avoid any kind of bundle context. When we usually talk about DDD, we most of the time believe that DDD is a framework. And of course, as you know, it's not true. You are able to uh, do a communication to take the domain, your knowledge, and convert to software. Uh, but let's, uh, let's do a little bit more code right now. It's become boring. Uh, let's imagine a scenario. I'm Brazilian, so I suppose you enjoy soccer, which I don't, sorry. And I suppose you enjoy coffee, which I don't as well. Uh, just drug, drug dealer, maybe. <laughs> but I don't suppose you did that all life. I'm lying, so don't. 
Don't put me in jail. But let's imagine a scenario where a soccer team and want to store that information, right? And of course, we're talking about DDD. Let's convert our domain to the software. The first one that I'm going to write is the player, the soccer player, where we're going to do the basic things, the ID, right? So the ID, or we can have the username, whatever you wish. We have also the name. We have the city where this player come from. And finally, we have the salary, right? And we need to define one way to represent this little guy here. Of course, we have several ways to do that. OK, let's imagine big decimal, if you are familiar with effective Java. Or you can use even int, where you work with cents. But in, when the soccer team, you're able to receive several type of currencies, right? I'm able to receive money from US, from Europe, from, from Brazil, and so on. One thing that we can do is create our uh, value object to represent that. And the idea of exploring DDD is, again, convert the knowledge to software. Uh, the DDD has two parts. The first one is the strategic. The idea that we have ambiguous language. We also have uh, the, the map context and the bounded context. So the language, the context, and the map context. And based on that, we are able to go to the tactical way where you convert that in partners, right? So what I'm doing here is my entity where I have my player. Right now, let's create a value object to represent money, right? And by the way, it is a good case to explore, for example, records. There are several discussions around, oh, I can't use a record just for DTO. And come on, that's not true. You are able to use and explore record design to several things. That includes the value object. For example, here, I do have my money. I have my currency from Java itself, as you can see. So my currency. And I do have my big decimal as value. Come on, Otavio, but my, my currency should be valid. I should not be able to create rec this money if without both, right? I should not be able to create money if without currency and if without big decimal as value. Indeed, we're able to do that with the compact constructor. So if you wish, I'm able to come here, to, to come here, and also do these validations, right? So required no new, I'm able to do this validation, I can put the, the, the message, currency is required. I will use the power of call paste. That is the Jedi lesson number one. So always use call paste everywhere. So I will come here. Right now, what I do have I have validation on my currency. So right now, every time that I create a money, what I can do is make it valid. Another point is, on my domain, it doesn't make sense uh, to have a negative value with big decimal. And yes, you can do this kind of validation here as well. So you can use if negative or any kind of thing, the record is a fancy class where, by default, you convert these fields as multiple. But basically, everything that you can do with class, you can do with uh, a record. For example, here, 
imagine a scenario that I want you some money. So I have a value and then I want you some money. So what I can do, exactly something that I could do with my, my class. So some money, money. I able to do the validation here. So uh, money is required. And then I can check the currency. So this currency equals money currency. I will able to summarize. Hey, how are you? So I, what can I do? I have my results. I come here. So this value adds money value. And then I able to define my context here, whatever I I want, I wish, and then return this value as a new money. So currency, result, and that is it. So right now, and throw exception, Jedi lesson number two, I always put generic exceptions. So if not message as well. Uh, the idea here is just to validate, right? So what I did, I put the validation, I check, and right now I centralize the whole behavior of money in a single place. I don't need to duplicate code. And one trick lesson, I don't, don't even need to memorize the operation. I don't need to use utilitarian class. One thing that I usually say is everything that I need to remember, I will forget. Make sure that your API is able to be silver bullet on that case. So I have my player, I have my money. Let's create my team. My team will be my aggregator, right? Because this little guy here will have both. My team will have my my mm, player, of course, my, the name of the team, and usually what I do have is a coach. Let's create a class. So what I do have, I have coach, money, player, team, and when should I use repository? As you know, as when you wish to do any kind of integration with database, I can use the regular way that everybody was usually do, right? Uh, with a suffix, so player, player repository, and then do any kind of integration that you will wish. And finally, I do have my service. Of course, you probably know the difference between anemic and rich model. The idea is to centralize a lot of behaviors in the players or even the entity. For example, if I wish to update my code or include a new person team, I should centralize everything here in the rich model, for example, here. So I will include a new player. Then do the validation. As far as I know, I should have the maximum of 10 players, right? Something like that. Elias, you are Brazilian, you're supposed to know that. No? Is somebody familiar with soccer? No? So I should validate some numbers that I have no idea. So I guess it's 10 maximum. And then do the validation and then include this person. So I can centralize the behavior in a single place. Um, but sometimes I need to do integration. For example, imagine right now that I want to uh, transfer players to another player. And then, of course, I don't want to, for example, put web service integrations, uh, database integration directly in my model. So what can I do? I can use service. So I will create a service class to remove these complexity injections 
directly in my model. And that is the idea number one. So uh, when you talk about distributed systems, the first step is care of business. So we design the application, we design the domains, and eventually, more often than we wish, we need also to go to there are a couple books. Don't worry, I will share the GitHub repository later. Um, but the point is, I need to merge because I have my modern, my API in Java, because we do love Java. And I need to store this information in any kind of, kind of database, like relational database, like NoSQL database, where we have several ways to handle with NoSQL, such as key value, document, white column, and graph. And both are basically a merge, right? Because Java has polymorphism, Java has encapsulation, Java has several things that does not have support to the database itself. As the database has transactions, has uh, relationship that Java does not support. And based on that, we learn a new word, the impedance mismatch between Java and my database. And that is the issue number one. So I got that to become a JDI, I need to understand the business first, the why, the reason. And then I need to face a new issue, is how to handle, because I have my domain, I have my Go, I have my database, and both are different. And we, right now, we're going to go to the step number two. That is the isolation. That is one way to make sure that my business is safe from technology. And that sounds weird, right? Come on, Otavio. We are writing code using Explorer technology. How do you dare to talk about this kind of thing? That's the reality. So if you go, for example, to just enough soft architecture, a risk-driven approach, I put this code here where the abstraction is one way to fight against the complexity. So instead of I have a single blob or a single structure, I break down that in small piece. Right? I'm able to do that because otherwise I'm going to do the ball of mud, a structure monolith. And every time that I do that in a single place, it's hard to maintain, it's hard to write tasks, it's hard to do a lot of things. So what are you going to do? Write more layers, right? So that we love MVC, Model View Controller. So three layers. But eventually, the layers become an enemy, like the hexagonal model. Who hates that as well? I do. It's a buzzword. But the point is, as much layers you're going to put, it's harder to maintain, it's harder to understand, it's harder to, to even write more features. And... We go, you go to the first step, that is business, isolation. And another point of isolation is performance. If you are able to isolate your business from the, the modeling, you are able to take advantage of your code. You are able to do advantage of the several NoSQL database or SQL database if it doesn't impact your business. Okay? So, the idea right now is, okay, I explain to you the business, the reason, and isolation performance. And the next question is, how can, how can Jakarta help me to achieve this result, right? How can I use the Jakarta specification to achieve the three steps? Jakarta specifications, you can use three, way, three ones. Uh, the first one, I guess we are familiar, that is JPA. The second one is uh, Jakarta NoSQL, and the third one is Jakarta Data, where we're going to talk about those two right now. So what I'm going to have here is 
I will use my single application, my Pawn application, where I have my app, as you can see here, to simplify, to make it easier to us. What I'm going to do is I will use a single Java SE application. And based on that, I will create my uh, integration with MongoDB using the same business. So I will take, for example, here my player. I will use my Jedi Power number one, that is copy paste, and bring to my performance detail. And right now, I will, I will use annotation to do integration between Java and NoSQL database, for example. Uh, on this case, uh, if you are familiar with JPA, uh, it's kind of easier to you because, OK, I want to define an NT. So you can use the empty annotation. Simple like that. I want to define my ID. You can use the ID annotation. And you want to define a column that, will be persist uh, that has persistence one by one. Each annotation should I use? Column. So right now, everybody is able to use uh, the specification, especially because it should take uh, the same nomenclature that you are able to use as Java developer. So I have the same thing, player, username, city. I will remove the salary just for a while. I'm going to show to you why. And right now, what I'm going to do is I will create my constructor. So I have my constructor. I will have my default constructor that I will show to you why later. And finally, I will do my two screen because this one here will be my front end. Why not? I will create my instance here. And I will create my player, the Neymar, the unique one that I know, and Pele, of course. So I will come here. I will have the Neymar player. Hopefully, I'm writing properly, correct. Neymar. And finally, the city where he was born, that is Santos. Right now, what I do have, I have my namer with the username, the name, and my entity is complete. My next step is, OK, I have my business, I have my goal, and I want to persist that on my database. Once I'm talking about NoSQL, I will use the most popular one, that is MongoDB. So uh, to do this integration with uh, NoSQL, Jakarta NoSQL provides a template interface. So once I'm talking about document uh, integration, let's do it with document template. Document template. I will inject using my container. Oops, let's do a couple of the entries here. And what else I need to do? Let me check here. So I need to use configurations to define uh, the properties to do the connection. Of course, I need to make sure that my database is on. So I will come here, I will take my container, I will start my MongoDB instance, I will start. And based on that, what I'm going to do is create my application, my Neymar application. Right now, I will do the insert. I will retrieve that information, so find by 
player where you can use the ID, the AMR, that's probably I'm writing wrong. The API that I do have here is it works with over Java 8, so we are able to return an object as an optional. The idea here is to, okay, I don't know if the information we return or not, so instead of check new pointers, you are able to use optional to do any kind of val validations. Um, and finally, what I'm going to do is I will delete. So templates, delete, player, class, and the ID. Oops. And as I said, I will use this result as now you, but Neymar. And then I will do it again, the empty result where I will use my call base power here again. And then I will execute, and let's play to everything work, right? So the first step, as you can see, I insert any kind of operation in my NoSQL database, Neymar, that probably I write wrong. And then I delete, and then I return again, of course. There is no information there. Um, a good point is, OK, right now, Tavio, you are doing a tie integration with a NoSQL database. And you mentioned about isolation, right? Uh, I don't want to be super tight with NoSQL database. I want to have an interface where I am able to do this integration. Uh, one solution that we do have, that we do provide, is the repository interface. So you can use define as a team, because if you remember the approach of the DD, the DD says that we are able to do a collection of, and a collection of players is a team. O on this case, uh, I have I create my interface, then I will extend uh, a pageable repository where I have my player and also my string. And to activate this integration, what can I do is make it happen. So I will come here, I will have my team, my team, where I come here to my container, I will inject this little guy here. And instead of use the template, I will comment. And I will use my team right now. So I will use my team here to save, where for some reason, OK, I'm using the business here. But let's save here. And I will find by ID. So I will repeat this method by ID. So let's check what's going on here on my team. So not you. So let's return and everything. You'll be OK. And as well, I able to delete my team and do the exact operation that I could do. So, so I did a save, find my ID, delete, so delete by ID, and that is it. So I have the same idea of do operation with this NoSQL database. 
So right now, what did I do? Right now, I'm a little bit far from my NoSQL details. So I do have my repository. Of course, if you wish, you can use the classic, like rename uh, player repository. to make it possible. And what I'm doing here is integration. As usual, you can do queries using in exploring the idea of method by query. For example here, given that I wish to do a query by name, we are able to do the find by name. Find by name name, where the name is here. So right now, instead of delete, I will, I'm not delete anymore. So I will come here. I use my team, find by name. And right now, instead of do the search by ID, what can I do is use the name Neymar to make it happen, right? So, Neymar's, and then I will return here. So, the result Neymar's. So I need you to don't delete, make it easier for me. But the idea is I can do integration with NoSQL if doubt my NT care about it. Because if I look into the API perspective, I do have no idea where the data comes from. I just know that I have a repository. And that, by the way, is the main idea or the main difference between a repository and a DAO, a data access object. Because with DAO, I know this, the database that I'm using. I know exactly the operation that I'm doing, right? Because usually when I handle with the data access object, I need to do the insert, I need to do the update. And right now, what I'm doing is I'm saving. And then my implementation will check if my information is there. If it's true, it will insert or update. Otherwise, it will insert. Um, oops. Right now, we have here. Another point is imagine that I want to handle with components. Uh, for example, as I mentioned, I do have my, oops, you know, supposed to be here. I have my team repository here, I have my player, but imagine right now that all my entities, I have the option to uh, find by name. Or, for example, what I do have, I have several common behaviors in the query. Of course, I don't want to multiply, multiplicate this information, I don't want to duplicate that information. What can I do? I can use it in Explore components. For example, I can create an interface that I call basic query here, where I will define a type T and list of T find by name. So string name. And instead of I have my play repository with this feature, with this information, I come here. And right now, I will include one more component. So my base query of player. So instead of duplicate the common queries behaviors, I able to create several components exploring interface. So right now, I will run again this app, 
And the idea is to keep the same behavior. Okay, as you can see here, I kept. So my player here, it is still Neymar. Of course, when we talk about real life, we also need to handle with pagination. We also need to handle with more details where we usually uh, need to think how to do it. With uh, this specification right now, if you're familiar with, for example, JPA, you need to do it manually, right? So we need to do one by one, query by query, probably check the stack overflow. Actually, doing questions to ChatGPT. Hey, ChatGPT, how can I do pagination with JPA? The good news is you don't need to do it anymore. You are able to do pagination by default using, for example, this new specification that is Jakarta Data. So, as simple here, uh, I'm extending the pageable repository. So, let's take a look on this little guy here. And this one here, by default, returns me a pageable with page. So, what are you going to do right now? Instead of return by name, let's put more players. At least I, I know a second one. Each pathway these days, right? Pele. Pele. And right now, I will save both. So I will save Neymar and Pele together. So list. Neymar, where are you? And finally, Pele. Save all right now. And then instead of doing query by file one for another one, I do a query find by everything. So I come here, I will delete. I have my team. I do find all where I need to return a pageable, each I can find the page. So my page number, you be the page number one, and then I will return the page. So right now, what can I do? I can do, uh, I get the total elements, the total page, and things like that, and of course the results. And you are able to do the for each, for example. And you are able to do the pageable or even the next pageable. So I come here, next pageable. And right now, I will increment the numbered page. So what I'm going to do here, I will come to my page. I do the for each. And then I will execute again. So right now, I have my page number one. Of course, once I only have one, two elements to, do, to work with this pagination. I need to do, be a little bit more smart. So pageable of the size of one. And the page number one. And then I come here with my page ball. I will replace with this little guy here, this page ball. So, and then do the query again. Team find all with my next page ball. Where this one here, you'll be my page number two. And then I will call paste my page number two. And then execute again my second page. So 
So let's see the page. Oh, of course, I need to identify better page one and page two. To make it to become easier to understand what's going on there. So what did I do? I did a pagination. So in the page number one, I got the player Tavio and then Neymar, and I able to do jump one by one, step by step. Okay? Um, you are able to define uh, a sorter, you are able to define a way to order this information. The point is right now, you don't need to go to check the chat GPT anymore. You need to be able to memorize step by step about what's going on. So to wrap up, the idea today is to, okay, how to become a Jedi of persistence and to make it possible, three steps only. Business, understand the reason that we're doing. You're able to explore a lot of DDD to make it possible. So using value objects, entities, and so on. The second one is isolation. Make sure that your business are safe from your business of, uh, of the technology that you are using. And the step number three is once you have the isolation, using that to take advantage to take advantage of the database itself. And to help you with that, you are able to use choose three specifications. The JPA, you, relational database, you can use JPA. To NoSQL, you can use Jakarta NoSQL. And one layer above, you can use Jakarta data to make far from the data perspectives. And to wrap up, the I will show it later, don't worry. But the main idea here is the reason that we're doing. And the main reason is, of course, the simplicity. The idea to do and to write and to design code is to make it easier to somebody else to do it, to somebody else to achieve that. And that is it for today. So thank you and hope you enjoy it. Gotcha.